Game Breaker TV. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Guildcast Episode 8. I'm Gary Gannon. This is GameBreaker.tv. Tonight, it's all about PvP all the time. I just like to make noise before the, on the intro track, watching the hosts, the co-host faces, and they just start laughing. It's like, what is he doing? He's acting like an ass. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Yep. All right. With us tonight for her final appearance. It has been short. It has been sweet. But... Our very own Ruby Bear, community manager at Massively.com, is leaving us. This is your last episode. It's only been eight This is episodes. my last episode. What's going on? Where are you going? What are you doing? I'm going to ArenaNet to join their community team starting on Monday. What? How crazy. <laughs> See, now <laughs> is when you start making noises. I start making noises? Well, like this? Yeah, that's when you start making like the, like the Game Breaker open. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Oh, really? You're leaving us! Ruby, I can't believe you're leaving us! He broke out the Dawson's Creed. I can't believe it! I love that it's looping! I can't believe it! I am so happy right now. Can we just, can that be like B-roll for the whole episode? Now it's slow-mo. It's even harder to watch. <laughs> I am crying. Oh, <laughs> but you are leaving us. You're leaving massively. You're leaving Game Breaker. You're going on to Arena Net. I'm very excited for you. Congratulations. Thank you. And I am so excited and so terrified right now. <laughs> ah, don't be terrified. New things, always fun. And even though it's only been seven episodes, you'll always be part of the Game Breaker family. Oh, thank you. Start crying. Come on, I'm trying to. Come on, really? Nope, sorry. No? <laughs> sorry, I got nothing. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, until Sunday, I'm still all massively, and then I make the transfer on Monday. So, so Sean what? So like when? What is that? When is it? Monday? Monday. All right, this just I'm in. Guildcast that. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, <laughs> and Monday. Oh, yeah. All right, let me introduce the other co host. Of course, Massively's editor, chief in charge, and beard extraordinaire, Mr. Sean Schuster. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. Good to see you. How's that beard doing? It's uh, it's here. It looks kind of tame it's today. Hanging there. It looks kind of tame today. It looks. Did you did you work on? Yeah, it? use a new conditioner. You know. I can tell. I can tell. I can. I can tell by the <laughs> pixels. Uh, finally, we have Talkteria's own Elizabeth for joining us for the first time. How are you, Elizabeth? Hey. Nice to meet you. Hello, I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Very good. Thanks for coming on the show. My pleasure. Absolutely. All right, so let's get into it. Guild Wars Insider has been super busy this week. Uh, they did a huge interview uh, with some of ArenaNet's PvP team and managed to get a ton of new screenshots, PvP of uh, PvP and armor and stuff like that. I got a bunch of video here. It's going to be great. Uh, let's start on the lighter side of things with the armor, which you're looking at here. You know, some of the screenshots showed some Norn females wearing some uh, Scholar armor. We got the same in the red and the blue here. There's some mixed reactions on this on these armor sets, right? I mean, a lot of people loved it, but it's, some people felt it was a little too skimpy, a little maybe too over the top for the uh, Guild Wars fans. What do you guys think? Is it, it, I also heard the, the the Ion Asian feel tossed around a little bit. What do you guys think? Nobody Ooh. wants to be like the first one to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know. I like, I'm 50-50 on it. I like how ornate, I mean, I'm a big fan of like the designs on there. And I'll tell you what bothers me so much is everything like between the waist and the thighs because it looks a little bit like a diaper to me. <laughs> really? I mean, if you look at that, and I hate to do that because I love the ArenaNet artist, but it kind of looks like a diaper. Also, I've been changing stocking. diapers for the last two months, and I don't, I haven't seen one that looks like that. Yeah, you're buying the yeah. wrong brand. This is like the really good brand. Also, stockings and garter belts do not work like that. They do. They, they, really they, they do it. Oh, they do it. They do when I go to sleep oh at night. Gosh. Seriously, what's wrong with that? Hello. Uh, I don't know. Clearly, so, you have never seen real ones. <laughs> it's okay. So okay. <laughs> so when you're at ArenaNet, are you going to be uh, like going up to the artists, and you're like, no. 
no, that's no. No, that's that all wrong. Yeah, all wrong. The artist's office going. Why are you doing that? Why would you do that? <laughs> too no, much. I like too much midriff. Too much midriff showing. What do you think, Elizabeth? I've, are you were you offended by these? Do you think they're a little too over the top, or what? Um, I'm not really a big stickler on armor practicality, so I wasn't necessarily offended by it. It's not an outfit that I would necessarily put on my picture or on my character. The one that I thought was most peculiar, um, they had a screenshot of a human female warrior in the Battle of Kylo, and uh, she had things hanging up all over the place that I thought were not very protective. Um, so for cloth armor, you can't really say that, it, oh, it's being, you know, not useful in not covering stuff, but a warrior, I would expect to be maybe a little more well covered. Really? You don't, you don't expect, like, you know, people who are well, going to fight cloth, and get so taken, really... you might take a fireball to the stomach, you don't think that that's enough protection right there? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Sean? Um, two thumbs up. No, I, I just think that, You're such um, a pig. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like Sean. <laughs> no, I I uh I don't know. It's one of those things that's fantasy, you know, it's it's kind of like a traditional fantasy look. Uh it, I don't know. It just seems like you don't really want to play something that's all covered up and covered up in robes. You want you know, you want to show off everything and I mean I'm not not skin wise. <laughs> <laughs> that came out really wrong. But you know what I mean? No, like, it came out really show right. Off. Yeah, really. I'll stick up for you. you try to show... It's guys versus girls here today. I know. It's... <laughs> yeah, we'll Elizabeth and I are going to go to the that, bathroom right? and talk about you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I do see, like, you know, where people kind of like bringing up the Ion sort of more Asian feel. How, is, does it differ a lot from Guild Wars 1 armor from what we're used to? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I can. it's got a familiar look to it. And I honestly, I mean, I've played in Elementals for five years. I don't have an issue with how much skin is showing. Um, it's just, I don't know, something about, and again, something about that diaper look doesn't appeal for me. But it's got a familiar, I don't know, it's just got a familiar feel to it. I don't know if it's because it's the same artists or if it's because they actively tried to stay within certain artistic boundaries. But it looks like Guild Wars to me. It just doesn't necessarily appeal this particular piece. So it this definitely feels like Guild Wars to me. Oh, sorry. No, no, um, go ahead. Go but uh, that doesn't mean that I would want that exact outfit on my character. This uh, this shot here that we're looking at actually is uh, also showing off. Uh, this is the lobby area, correct? Yeah, it's the oh. PvP lobby. So how does it? Do we know how this works at all? Is it like? Uh, it's just like an instant spaced area where everybody kind of hangs out and socializes and forms groups and stuff like that and then uh, go back into that portal or something to, to then actually get into the PvP area? Or are you just zoned out? Do we know any more information about it? Um, what he said, and I'm, I don't have the exact quote in front of me, but he was like, this is where you can hang out, socialize, form groups, catch your breath, and then jump back in. So it's kind of a little, you know, it's just a lobby. I mean, in the traditional yeah. sense, I think. Do we know, I mean, does, uh, forgive me, I don't know this, but does Guild Wars have a system with the, with the PvP that you can actually jump into games from anywhere on the map? I mean, I know it is fast travel, or do you have to actually go to the lobby and hang out and, like, you know, to actually queue up? Because a lot of the new current MMOs, you just click a button and you can queue up from anywhere in the world. Do we have any clarification on that? I haven't read any clarification. I would assume you go through the lobby, um, but I don't think they've actually put out official word on that yet. I kind of, what do you guys think of that whole idea? I mean, Sean, what do you think? I mean, that actually sounds, I kind of like the idea of not being able to queue maybe anywhere in the world, and that would really make use, because now that you brought up the whole idea of a lobby, that's what kind of just like, I just thought about it was that, well, if they're creating a lobby, they obviously want you to socialize there. There must be a reason to actually push people into that area to hang out, because if you could just queue from anywhere in the world, then I would almost assume that nobody would hang out at this area. Yeah, exactly. And I think that in Guild Wars 1, they did that. They're, you know, with the arenas, uh, you basically, you know, the PvPers kind of have their area to hang out and to, I mean, they even have their, uh, the emotes, the special PvP emotes that they can show off, you know, and, and things like that. So it's kind of like this, this thing, this community uh, where you can do that. And to have a certain place to do it, I think, is a really great idea. You know, uh, taking from other games, like you mentioned, I mean, uh, Warhammer Online is, a, is uh, one of the kind of recent ones that did that and I remember queuing up for RVR and then you run around and then you forget that you queued up and yeah. all of a sudden it, you know 20 minutes later it takes you into the PvP and you're like oh I forgot I queued up for that you know, so, so I mean it's better 
to me to have one certain place to get all that together. I agree. You know, it just it, it promotes socializing, hanging out with other people, meeting new people, and and I'm not actually a huge fan of the queue from anywhere in the world kind of system. Ruby, what do you think? Are you a fan of it? You know, if it's going to take like a super long time, and I'm trying to remember. Um, Sean and I talked about this, but it's literally been like a year. Was it Fallen Earth where you can like queue and then go do your own thing while you're waiting, and then they let you know when it's ready? I can't remember. Most most of the other games are like that, though. Most of them, yeah, like Star Wars, like... you know, you can just okay. click a button, queue, go about your own time, and then you'll get a pop up that says, "Hey, your queue is ready." Yeah. Now, see if it's going to take like a super long time. If you're waiting like 20, 30, 40 minutes or some insane time, then I think it's more reasonable to allow you to go and actually play the game while you wait. That's a good point. But if I think it's going to move a lot more quickly in this case, I just have a feeling that you're not going to be sitting for that length of time. So, so Guild Wars Insider kept uploading a lot more images, some of these that you're looking at here. They got to show some more armor, some pets, uh, also the new PvP map. The new the, the PvP maps look great. Um, uh, what is the one that they're showing here? Is this Kilo? Kylo? Kilo, right? Battle of Kylo. Battle of Kylo. Mm -hmm. uh, that's this the only one that like, we've seen up until now, correct? Yeah, we've seen this one like in great depth. That's been their, I guess, their showcase PvP map. That's been the one with the trebuchets and all the craziness happening in some of the uh -huh. videos that we've seen. Uh, uh -huh. You know, I, I I think from looking at, it, I mean, mo that it had plenty of depth. A lot of like looked like it had like a lot of hiding places, choke points, kind of you know stairs. Just it seemed to be really diverse with capture points and stuff like that. Do the do these look as in depth to you guys from what you can tell from the screenshots? I would say yeah. yes. I mean, you see a lot of elevation differences and things to block line of sight, so I think that this is very much as detailed as the Battle of Kylo map that we've already seen. Was there any other information yeah, also definitely. passed on, guys, that they, uh, they, they, they added with these screenshots? No, it was just like, here's pictures. Enjoy. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> All right, let's move on from the uh, on to the PvP portion of actually uh, the interview from Guild Wars Insider. So they did a roundtable interview with ArenaNet's Matt Witter, Jonathan Sharp, and uh, Mike Ferguson. Uh, they had a lot to talk about uh, with Guild Wars 2 PvP in general, also venturing into a subject that I love, eSports. Uh, Jonathan Sharp started off by saying, um, he said, we try and look at sports, be it soccer, football, boxing, baseball, basketball, all that stuff. We just look at what makes something interesting and fun to watch for people. We try to design around that idea of what makes you want to watch. I think this is this is so insanely important, right? It's like, what do you think that they could possibly be doing though to make it sort of easier for for people to watch and spectate? Not just like spectator mode, but it sounds like they're really they're really focused on trying to get this right from a from a from a. Uh, uh, a spectator's point of view, not just the player's point of view. What do, you, what do you think they could do, Ruby, to kind of like push that along? You know, I think from a purely fluffy point of view, it's gonna, they're working to make it visually appealing. I mean, like Elizabeth said, there are lots of different levels, there are different heights. Um, everything just looks amazing. And especially like with the trebuchets are a good example, lots of big, epic, visually appealing attack modes. And lots of things you can do that like go across. I mean, I think the tre trebuchet goes, it's like all the way across the map, isn't it? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like a flaming yeah. ball of death flying across the map. <laughs> so, I mean, they're actually, they're actively doing things to make it more interesting to watch. And it's not just a bunch of people running in circles with little bitty animations. How did the spectator mode work, Sean? In um, in because Guild Wars One had a spectator mode as well, right? How, how did how yeah. did how did the spectator sure. mode work from a from a user perspective? Spectating. Actually, it was pretty cool because it was like uh, when you die, you can click on someone else's name and you can watch them as they play, uh, so that you can. Uh, I mean, that's that's uh, normal anyway. But in observer mode, you can click on them anyway, and you can see. Um, it's it's kind of funny. It's like you're in this little lobby, a little chat room by yourself with the other observers, and you can click on anyone, see what they're doing, see what spells they're using, what their builds are, and then you can chat with other observers and kind of, you know, talk about the builds and uh, Chuck Norris, you know, things like <laughs> Which that. Which, of course. And, <laughs> yeah. But I, it, I think it was great because it, they're one of the first to really do that, to, to have such a focus on, um, on the observer mechanics. And, uh, you know, I mean, that was early on. That was, you know, five, six years ago. 
and uh, they've always kind of had that focus on on uh, not only playing PvP but also observing it. Elizabeth, how did they did they do anything kind of with like uh, free roaming cameras or anything, or was it all from the perspective of other players? Um, in Guild Wars One, it was all player perspective, so far as I know. Um, and that's actually something I'd like to see them fixing uh, moving forward is having free roaming perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's really what would push this into a true esport, right? I mean, to, to actually be coined esports, you need shoutcasters, you need commentators doing live commentary. And to kind of do that, you need a system where you can kind of like move around the map freely, find where the action is really quickly and things like that. You guys have any ideas of how they might design around that? Uh, first of all, they're absolutely going to need custom servers and the ability for private leagues and tournaments um, if they want to actually be taken seriously as an eSport. Um, I'd also like to see a replay or watch later option, uh, which I don't think was available in the original Guild Wars. I could be totally wrong. Um, I think they want to put more info in spectator mode as far as letting me know as a spectator what the different health numbers are on different team members. So if I'm following team member A, I can see what BC, D, and E are doing as far as health is concerned because that's something that isn't presently in as far as I know um, because that's not something players can see but it's something that would be important for someone casting. Do you guys think that we're really going mean, to, one thing that you hit on there that really I, I agree with a thousand percent is replays. Do you guys think that we'll actually see a whole replay system built into this where we can download a tiny little file and you know some website will keep track of all of them and we can pull them down and do tournaments and stuff like that? I mean that would be killer. Yeah, it would be. I mean, that's what they should do. And they should take a look at the way, like, Madden does it, you know, uh, not only with the floating cameras like that, but the replays, the, you know, the the refers backward, you know, slow-mo, all that stuff. Because once you do that, you can, it's like a real professional sports where they take a look at these things and dissect them mm -hmm. and see how they can play better. So I think that would go a long way. And it's just how the StarCraft community is doing it, right? I mean, they need they have the tools yeah. to kind of like fast forward stuff, rewind stuff, jump on cam, stop yeah. it, pause it, do all that. I mean, for uh, for it to be truly considered an eSport, I think that, that you have to give the tools for the players and the community to kind of pick up the ball and run with it. So, uh, Ruby, get on that. Your first job, get on that. <laughs> right. Get on yeah, that. let me just make a note of that make, because <laughs> I do have that kind of power. Make, make a note. <laughs> Say, it better be replay. Or game breaker's gonna be really angry if there's no replay. No, guys, I'm a designer. Yeah, there you go. Hey, you're just everything that's over there. That's all. We're just gonna now. I've got. I got a main so line. Screwed. You're so screwed. You're gonna have to like change your like phone number, your email address. Like this damn Ganon just keeps bothering me. Uh, so Guild Wars Insider asked about spectator mode for Guild Wars 2, and the developer said that. Um, while wow, they, they haven't really talked about it publicly, that they plan for those types of things. That was the quote, plans for those types of things. Uh, I can only imagine, like I said, I think what we're talking about are, are some of those things. Replays would be a huge one, free roaming cameras, rewind abilities, uh, meters, all that kind of stuff is data that, that you really need to think about, I guess, in terms of the, the shoutcaster, of what kind of information they need to keep talking. Right? Like, they just have to keep talking, and they got to go, like, you know, he's got damage, and he's going down to this, and his health is low, and, you know, the team has got this many points, that team's got this many points, and if you don't give them all of those holy quick... Holy cow. Holy cow. You'd be like, you know, you have Total Biscuit on. <laughs> it's a cry! I can't, I, can't, I can't do a Total Biscuit impression, but I, I would try. <laughs> um, uh, it sounds to me, though, like that they are really, really on top of this, and I don't think they would be alluding so much in use dropping the esports term as much as they are if we're not going to see some of this stuff. I hope we are. Um, next they said, uh, what do we got here? Uh, they said, they oh, said we, that? Yeah, they said, ah. <laughs> uh, they said, we've taken uh, some, we've taken some good things from other games and we've taken the bad things other games are doing and we tried to fix those. We won't call anybody out. But there are just things we feel like players should have access to. I agree. I mean, as probably leaderboards, private servers, being able to. I think all of the above of what you were saying, Elizabeth, just, you know, grow, uh, you have to have pre mades, like all that kind of stuff just has to be in there. Any, anything else on the list you guys would just love to see on the, on the wall of crazy, as we can call it? Hmm. Nothing? I think a really organized leaderboard. You know, uh, people. I mean, people PvP just to PvP, but there are also quite a big majority that PvP just so they can be at the top of that ladder. 
Um, and you know, the original Guild Wars had a, a really nice ladder system on their website originally. Uh, I don't even know if they still do it, but you know, they they would keep track of you know the best guilds and the best uh, best players and all that. And now it it's like you really have to really showcase that. I think so. I hope they do that well. Anything you guys think are just totally missing right now? Like anything that we're not thinking of that's like missing from the esports community in general? I think. I think if they follow suit, looking at like StarCraft and things like Madden, they kind of got they kind of have it covered. MMOs don't seem to do it. No MMOs really kind of implement these tools in that kind of a way, though. I mean, Rift's got they're 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 trying to put some more stuff in. I'm trying to think who would be like the top of their game in the MMO, like PvP esport thing. I I, I was gonna say it's be World of Warcraft, and like that's it's it's really poor over there. Uh, yeah. All right, siege vehicles. Um. That's something that the team has also been messing around with. Uh, in the interview, they they mentioned that the trebuchets, uh, and like you said, Ruby, they'll be shown uh, in the in the in the Kylo PVP map. Mike followed up with this. He said uh, the trebuchets in WVWVW are much much larger. It's really hard to describe how far they can shoot in terms of range. Just know that we had to put it put in special code so you can even see it. It's seriously epic. Do we have confirmation, Ruby, that these things actually they, they shoot from one side of the map to the other side of the map? I know they do in Kylo. I have no idea. Can you imagine shooting all the way across the map in WVWVW? I don't know. Do you think I can get in there that as a player be... and you could just like trebuchet me across the map? That'd be epic. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if you could like get in the trebuchet? Exactly. That's oh, what I a, mean. A sura tossing. That, yes. would, that would be hilarious. They need that. You Add know that what? In. I would pay for that in the NC Soft store. I would buy like Absolutely. an Asura tossing. Totally. Lo load a character yeah. up, and maybe when you get loaded in, you get a little parachute on your back, and then you just like go across the thing, and like right before you gotta like launch it, and you like land, and that'd be awesome. I'm just thinking it's too bad that assassins aren't in Guild Wars 2, because you know how pointy some of the assassin armor is. <laughs> they you would load die one of those they suckers. <laughs> they die in midair. No way! You just impale like seven they, people when you land. They blow away. They're so skinny. Yeah, good point. <laughs> it's like launching a dandel, like blowing a dandelion. Yeah. <laughs> this this next statement really kind of blew me away. They said that each WVWVW map. Can they come up with something else that I don't have to keep saying that? WVW. No, I like it when you say that. I know. <laughs> you have to say wuva wuva wuva. Wuva 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 wuva. They say the, 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 the each map can it can hold an estimated 500 people, and there are four maps. That's awesome. That sounds awesome, yeah. but scares me like so much because I'm just like, <laughs> is this just gonna be like, uh, is it gonna be? Oh, check out the Guild Wars PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> Slide <Yeah>. one. <laughs> <laughs> Slide two. Like, is my computer just gonna yell at me and burn in flames? Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, other other games have tried that. Um, there's a, a game called Aka that tried to do 1,000 versus 1,000. Uh, I don't think that really worked, though. But um, can't you say what you said about that earlier today? Oh, do I have to say that? It's so mean. Okay. You do now because it was funny. Well, I just said that I don't think they'll have they have a thousand people playing the game. Oh, ouch! <laughs> Zing. Sorry, you get into that guess. later. I can say that on a Guild Wars podcast. They anyway, can, they um, can claim that because they can't even try and prove it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but I mean that would be truly epic because wasn't there there was just a world record that was set for like 999 people on one map in one battle, and uh, you know if you get 500 versus 500, then you beat that. What do you guys think, though, seriously about 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 like frames per second issue here? I mean, that's a lot of people. I, I I'm assuming that they're going to, I don't know. Do you think the maps are just so well designed that people are just all over the map, and you're not really going to see like you know a mass of 500 people in one spot? Because I can't imagine almost any engine online. I really can't imagine 500 people on my screen and it not just coming to a halt. I don't care how good of a computer. You're Okay, here's my here's my like peer guess because I honestly have no idea. I can't imagine they have less than 500 people alpha testing this game. So in my head, they just got 500 alpha testers and said, "Everybody in this map, go." And hmm. but do you think see that, if it sucked or not? Do you think that they're saying just get into this map and go, which I could see, or do you do you think they're pushing all 500 people to one point and say, "I'll go here and see what happens"? I mean. I assume so. I mean, it seems like that they would actively try to break this in testing, 
before they sold the game and let the players break it. I mean, better find it out now than later. I mean, because we, we yeah, saw... We, go ahead, Elizabeth. Um, it's a pretty ambitious goal, so I'm sure that they'll be doing all the appropriate stress testing, but from the way that they're describing it, at least, it sounds like it's going to be such a widespread and varied map that you're not going to have a lot of people except for, like, siege and keeps in one area at a time. That's what I'm wondering. That's what I'm sort of getting at is that the way the maps and the and this, the, uh, the objectives are laid out is that it really spreads people out in a way that you're not always going to get these huge bottlenecks. I mean, we saw huge problems like in, in, in Warhammer Online and they didn't, you know, taking keeps and stuff. We didn't have 500 people in the same spot. And I mean, that would just go down to a slideshow. I think Dark Age had some pretty big, some pretty big uh, battles. I don't know. That's Planet a lot. Planet side too. Yeah, yeah. Planet side had some huge ones. I, I can't wait to try it out. Ruby, Ruby, get on that. I'm checking my email. <laughs> I'm, I'm awesome. F5. I'm, I'll add that to my list. I'm, I'm, F2 F2 on list. I'm F5-ing uh, right now for my beta key because I'm, I'm now we are <laughs> Yeah, I get in line. You're like the 87th person today that's asked me for oh, a beta key. Oh, I'm sure. Key. Like your Twitter. Can I just point out that I don't even have a beta key? Yeah, your Twitter is just like, you know, congratulations. Can you get a beta key? Love you so much, Ruby. Oh, yeah. So glad. Excited for you. Can I have a beta key? Yeah. Can we get a beta key? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so previously right, on Guild, added to that to that checklist. I'll put it on Team Box for you. Don't worry. Um, oh my gosh! On <laughs> <laughs> uh, previous Guildcast, we talked about the uh, mesmer illusions. I know. Uh, all of a sudden, Sean's beard perks up. Uh, Guild Wars Insider talked uh, a little bit about this as well. They they were curious about just how uh, the illusions would work, and we brought this up as well. And we say they, the question that they asked, they said, "Have you found that mesmer uh, mesmer's illusions really do do fool a lot of people?" And it was actually a really good example. Uh, Jonathan answered with the the question with this. He said, "I was playing against someone through, someone and had like 10% health. I ran around a corner as they were chasing me. I was able to pop off some illusions quickly." As they rounded the corner, I just stood still. I started very slowly pushing my number one skill like my illusions were doing. They were like, wait, which one of these is the real one? I then switched my weapon set and went invisible for three seconds. With those three seconds, I was, I was able to make it back around another corner, heal up, and get to safety. This sounds like a great distraction tool. I mean, it, it, it sounds like it's really going to work in situations like this where it's really distracting. Um, I, and I also imagine that he's playing against people who really know the game inside and out. I mean, do you guys think that it'll it'll keep being viable, or do you think that people will find counters fairly quickly? You know, I love this story, and you know what it made me think of is like this ongoing battle between developers and hackers. Somebody finds a way to keep them out, and then the hackers come back and they find something better. And I feel like that's going this is going to be this constant back and forth. I mean, the Mesmer's, you know, you have this scenario like the story he told, and people figure that out. I think later he said that at one point somebody countered it by spamming like AOE, 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 and forcing him to react in a different way. And I think that kind of thing is going to happen, and then they're going to come back with a counter for that. I think it's going to be interesting to watch this constant back and forth and see how it progresses over time. Sean, you love but I don't the think there's any just, okay, now you're done. We can't, Mesmer's aren't viable anymore. No, what? no. <laughs> I just mostly just said that to watch Sean cry. <laughs> but yeah, the, 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 AOE, the AOE scenario sounds like the obvious one, right? Yeah, I think, um, I don't know. There, there's always going to be something. Uh, you know, that's one of the be beautiful things about Guild Wars 1 is, you know, you have these builds. This is the build of the week, build of the month, you know, flavor of the month. And then uh, so there's always a counter. Someone invents a counter. And it's like, oh, I didn't even think about using those skills together. Um, and then ArenaNet has to nerf it because it's, uh, you know, everybody's using it and farming with it and, and going crazy. So then they have to change a little bit here. But that's just that constant balance, which has always made it interesting. Uh, I, I just think we, if, you know, we leave it up to the players, there's always going to be a, a counter. Mm -hmm. They're always going to break stuff. Yeah, yeah. MMO players that's love That's one of the cool things stuff. about Guild Wars to me, though. Yeah, What's that? exactly. Yeah, what? I actually think that's a really healthy thing in a competitive environment is everybody building off uh, what's going on so that the game doesn't stagnate. It's actually exactly. a really great way to keep the game interesting. Yeah. It is It is in the sense of as long as all the other classes are balanced and have other counters, and then it, it, it's well balanced, right? I mean, that, that would be the big yeah, thing. Absolutely. I hope the illusions... Uh, that his, his scenario sounds like it totally will work, but it sounds like it's... 
it really it really only works because it's around the corner and it's out of sight for a minute. I gotta wonder how the illusions are gonna work when you're in sight with a lot of people. I guess I guess in the chaos of a fight with a lot of people on screen, you could probably also kind of pull some of the same moves, right? Mm -hmm. Hopefully, yeah, and and hopefully you can also apply it to your teammates. I think that would be great. Like provide some illusions for your friends, and that would be cool. What do you friends mean by that? Friends and family illusions. What do you mean? <laughs> like, you know, like provide cover, like. You have someone maybe who, I don't know, captured the flag and you want to make them invisible, then maybe you can, you know, actually apply your illusion to them instead of instead your of yourself. Yeah. Do we know that? That'd be cool. That'd be no. That'd I mean, be great. That's, like that's, a, that's, what that's I'm a like, total speculation. That would be sick. Like you could target your buddy, like you know, tab them in or something, and tag them, and then like do the illusion, and it actually creates an illusion for them. Yeah, Ruby. Number three no. on the list. There you go. <laughs> Write this down, Ruby. Ruby, seriously, we're giving you gold. Okay, listen, we got to wrap can, this up early you, because I have to learn how to code. You're going to go in there day one, and you're just going to be like, all right, we did the last episode of Guildcast. We rocked it. I got I got a list. To, I got a checklist, guys. Let's, let's start going one by one. We'll get and there. Next thing I know, I'm back on floor one out on the sidewalk going, what just happened? Hey. <laughs> by Guild Wars 12. You can come back. You can, just, you can come right back to Game Breaker. Thanks for getting me fired. No, you're always welcome here. You're always welcome. Oh, and Jasmine wants a puppy. Okay, I can actually probably do the puppy more than I can do any of this other stuff. <laughs> I'm like deliver. I'm like not even looking at Dawson. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no let's should. do some viewer questions. Uh, Travis has a few questions and concerns, so we'll start off with this one. He wants to know how many character slots we'll start off with in Guild Wars Two. Um, no. at, right now they're saying five. I don't think that's like carved in stone. Um, <laughs> um, sorry, I'm like getting IMs while they're like popping up in my <laughs> my screen while I'm talking. Um, there's five right now, and I think that may or may not change. They're like not hardcore committing to that. So, you think it's enough, Elizabeth? Five sounds about right. I mean, they were never going to be giving people all eight, um, and anything less than that, people will always be complaining. Um, but five sounds like a pretty fair thing to me. I mean, it's enough to try out at least every race, have a favorite race, yeah. and kind of play around with the game a bit. Sean, you happy with five? Yeah, I mean, I would like, you know, one for each race and one for each class combo. And it, it, you, you ever play uh, like? I was just, yeah, like <laughs> was gonna Heroes say, how many like do you want? Twenty years. <laughs> but yeah, I, I realize that's not practical. Uh, I think five is fair. So next, he's actually just concerned. This is more isn't really a question, but he's concerned about class balance. He says Guild Wars was notorious for nerfing skills because of farming and PvP exploits. It was frustrating to have a great build only to be heavily nerfed. What would you say to this, Elizabeth? I mean, is this a concern that he should have for Guild Wars 2 as well? Um, I think one thing that's interesting that Izzy Cartwright talked about a, a bunch um, quite some time ago was that it's a lot easier for them to do balancing now without being really hardcore about it. Like before they had to be really careful because, you know, the monk class was necessary. And so if you had to change something in the monk, it was a lot more far reaching. So they had to be a lot more careful about balancing. I think we're going to find that it's a lot easier for them to be balanced coming out of the gate and to do any balancing after release necessary because the classes are so much more independent. Um, that said, I think that people are absolutely going to find ways to break the game. Sure. So there is going to be nerfing necessary. And that's kind of like, you know, there's no MMO that doesn't need balancing. Something's going to get nerfed. Something's going to get buffed. That's what happens. That's where patch notes are for. It's part of the game almost, mm -hmm. I'm starting to think. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And I can see the frustration of having a build you like and then having it nerfed into oblivion um, because it's possible I had, you know, six, seven, eight, nine of those <laughs> happen now and again. And darn it, my farming, my ecto farming, what happened? Oh. Um, but it's, but I know. And the thing is, I mean, just using Guild Wars 1 as, as an example because he's saying it's frustrating. You're not actually intended to go down into the underworld and scoop up 40 ecto in an hour, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's not really the intent. So when things get that out of whack, they rein it in a little bit. And that's kind of what I think that's kind of what you're supposed to do. It'd be worse if they didn't. You need to grab the band hammer, start nerfing some stuff. <laughs> All right, Luke the Noah. Scythe. It's a good question here uh, for a newbie. It says, uh, Luke says, my girlfriend wants to play this with me, and uh, it will be her first ever MMO. 
Do you think Guild Wars 2 will be easy for a first timer to pick up or will it be too hard for people wanting to try an MMO? Really good question. I have no idea. I have not played it. What do you guys I mean it's kind of, this is this is a tough one, right? Because like we're all MMO veterans. We've all played multiple probably. I don't know your Elizabeth history, but I'm pretty sure you probably played more than one. Um and it's funny because it, I didn't think about it for a long time because a lot of people I play with were our MMO players for years. And when I started playing Rift, I had a buddy who never played one before. It was the first time I and I sat down and I was teaching him. And I was like, wow, these games are insanely complicated for people who have never played them. And for us, it's like second nature. You're like, what do you mean you don't understand this? Like, well, you know, it's a skill tree. You just put points in it. And they're just like, what are we, what am I doing? Like, he would, he would just be like, I have no, and even wow, like everybody goes, wow is like so casual and it's like the easy mode game. And it's like, for somebody who's never played an MMO, it is extremely complex to, 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 to kind of take all that information. So I think it's a great question for new people coming in. I mean, what do you guys think? Is it set up and structured in a way that people can kind of just jump right in and learn with it as it, and grow with it? Is it too early to like, say? I feel like the feedback that they've been getting, because, I mean, at conventions, a lot of people are going there and going up to this for the first time. Um, and they're actually, it seemed like they were comfortable enough with the idea that it's an approachable MMO to have, um, what was it, at PAX, not last year, but in 2010, they had like a level 40 demo. Um, so they're letting people just come up who had never touched the game before because it hadn't been available for even demo in the US and saying, here, play the level 40 um, characters. And I think that says a lot about the approachability of the game because for the most part, people weren't coming away thinking, I felt overwhelmed and that was horrible and I did nothing because they're so busy figuring out controls. Like people really seem to have the ability to get into it quickly, which I think speaks well for new, timer, new people and first timers coming into the game. And are the controls, from your guys' experience, I think most of you all played it except myself, but are the controls pretty much standard World of Warcraft controls? Like, could you, if, I, if, if I'm used to the MMO skill set, I just sit down and put a hand on a mouse, a hand on a keyboard, can I just go? All you do is press six. Oh, that's it? Just <laughs> six over and over. Press you are six. never going to live that down. <laughs> no, Actually, you know what I'm thinking of? Um, when we were at Fan Day last year, and Elizabeth, I don't know if you remember this, uh, Dan, that was on Guildcast last week or the week before, um, his brother came with him. His brother was like his guest for the trip, and his brother's not really a gamer. And I just remember that he played it some, and he picked it up pretty easily. Mm -hmm. So for what it's worth, I feel like it's pretty intuitive. All right, next up, another question. I am not even going, did this name, we get some good names. Look, I did, I am so sorry. Okay. No, no, don't be sorry, it's amazing. We get, we get some amazing names across on, on Game Breaker shows, but I have to say, this, I'm not even gonna try, and it seriously takes the cake. Like, what? Do you wanna like spell it out? Does anybody wanna take a shot at that? Go for it. I see Steve in there. You see Steve, yeah. yeah. I think this is just a tr major troll. <laughs> but, all right, question for Steven Kyung Nutson. Sure, there you go. Pretty good. Uh, you said, uh, in a previous show, you mentioned that a triple A MMO has to have its own forms on the official site. However, Guild Wars 2 still isn't taking this route. Do you think it will hurt them? I think I said that, uh, talking about forms. What do you it, think, Ruby? It's hard to say. I, what do you, yeah, Ruby. Yeah. I am not coding forums, okay? Let's get that out of the way right now. I am not making forums. You know what? It seems scary, um, though, to me. Ruby, you want to pass this along? You know, you just pass this along. You feel free, but... Oh, my gosh. Um... <laughs> Well, what's what's weird is that, like you know when when a company doesn't have their control over the forums, like what if what if like down the road they want to do something like Battle.net and or like they want to like you know build something or you know and do something with their community that maybe they don't even have on the table right now. It's like if if it grows to some like insane form site that they have no control over, that's, that that kind of sucks for them. It's like all of a sudden like somebody you know in Guild Wars three or four they got like this amazing idea and it's like oh but we don't have those you know. X, XYZ website owns those and they're making hundreds of thousands of dollars a month with those forms because they're worth a lot of money. Psst, psst. And I don't know. I don't think it's smart. I think it would probably take a lot more manpower. I just don't think it's smart. Ruby, what do you think? Well, I didn't do it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I think the Guild Wars community is unusual in that we don't have 
official, there aren't official Guild Wars forums for everybody to hang out on. Um, so the community made what is essentially is official forums. I mean, the Guru forums are as, I mean, is there really any other game that ha the community has created something that big without the official support of its game? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, because... Mine, Minecraft. And, and the thing, here's yeah. the thing is, that, and then Curse, oh, goes okay. and buy, and Curse goes and buys them for like, you know, mm -hmm. eight bucks. They go, hey kid, hey kid, you got you got you got some forms that are worth like hundreds of thousands of dollars. You don't know it. Here's five bucks, and then the kid goes, oh this my is god, hilarious to me that you're saying. This. The kid, the kid, kid's like happy he got five bucks, and maybe he gets to work a curse now, and and then <laughs> then curse starts selling the the advertising on the forms for like you know three hundred grand a month, and they're like, hey, look at these idiots. We just scoop up these forms from these kids, and they don't know. That's what happens, and then and then and then Minecraft doesn't have control over it, and I think it's I think it's bad. I think it, I don't think it's good. I wouldn't put it past the internet to make some. I think we're cutting any right now might be kind of a negative thing because as we go through dry spells of information, you would have to do a lot more monitoring because a lot more people would be belly aching on forums, which isn't oh something gosh, I yeah. personally would want to have to deal with. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw them later, but I wouldn't have expected to see any now. Hmm. What do you think, Sean? I think they're going to make forums just for Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, her position. Like, Here you go, Ruby. <laughs> This is getting worse and worse. I'm so fired. Can you get your own section? Can you get your own Ruby section in the forums? Is Ruby Ruby's hanging Ruby out? Ruby ranch. Ruby's ranch. There we go. That's, oh, Sean, that's where you, we can put them. Sean, you run you run a more, the most the most best amazing MMORPG website out there. What do you think about this? Like for game companies to not have control over their forums. Well, you know, I am all for uh, like community based forums. Like like Ruby said, Guru has been. Amazing! It's been very successful. It's been around since the beginning. Uh, that's where everybody goes. Everybody knows that that's where you go. And it's like, um, you know, you don't really have the, the heavy hand of developers like you do in a lot of other uh, official forums. You know, World of Warcraft is pretty notorious for that. Although uh, there was a time when anyone could say anything at the World of Warcraft forums, and everything was allowed. It was just pandemonium. Uh, no pun intended. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But also, you, you actually brought up, brought up a really great point about Curse. You know, I, I mean, I, I want to know what the, the meetings were like at ArenaNet after Curse went and bought, you know, they, they bought up these, these forms, you know what I mean? Because then they're like, oh, now they're going to make it into an advertising, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a giant uh, advertising <laughs> hub. You know what I mean? It's and I'm like, sorry, and you, and you, and you know that, that it's, there's actually a lot of dollars there, I, you know. There's yeah. a lot of dollars to be made on those forms, and now once they're gone, I don't know. And then, like I said, I think it's scarier for the long-term view. Are you just getting like, are you, are you just getting like bombarded by ArenaNet people like watching the show right now? Is that what's happening? That's what's happening. They're like, shut Sean up. They're just no, all actually, uh, Mike B is like screaming about Sean's beard. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> of course, you have to. And I was like, you guys are gonna have to stop talking because you're making I me laugh. All in all, I, I, I think for the for, I, I could see why company. It's great that like they leave it out to the community to sort of be like a community affair, like you said, and it kind of like makes it feel more grassroots and open. The problem is they they're going to get scooped up by some larger company entity, and it's going to get turned into a money making advertising platform regardless. So, I think that they should control it and help control the message, and then also be able to code around it and possibly build cool things later on that might have to tie into that kind of stuff. That's just mine. All right. Ruby, well, that's you know, they have the, the official bug reporting forums, so maybe that's a step in the right direction. Yeah. I honestly don't know. I mean, at this point, I know squat, so I'm still just speculating like everybody else. <laughs> Ruby's rants. All right. So last up from KB Gardner asks, is uh, with the Guild Wars 2 Hall of Monuments rewards, do you all think it's worth a person getting Guild Wars to bolster their start in Guild Wars 2? What do you think, Ruby? Should you go? You should buy all four little... things. Give them all your money. Well, what yeah. You're saying just give them your money? Just give them your money? Uh, throw it at them. Just throw money at the screen. I mean, I think the big thing is if you're not playing a game that you really don't like right now, yeah, why not, right? Give it a shot. I mean, how much how much is Guild Wars at this point if you have to buy it? It's got to be pretty cheap. I think you can get a really good deal on it. I don't yeah. know. Who's got it cheap right now? Probably can get the game with all the expansions and everything for like 20, 30 bucks, I'm going to guess, right? Yeah. Um, Chat room probably a little more than that, but still, I mean, it's the game. The is it, um, I, I want to say expansion so badly. Oh. <laughs> the campaign's the extension. I mean, they're a deal right now, and 
you know, it's not a sub fee. If you want the shinies in Guild Wars 2, go for it. It's, it's not that difficult, and it's kind of fun. Are the Hall of Monuments perks that worth it to go back in and start spending a lot of hours in the game? I hate saying unequivocally whether something is or is not worth it. For me, it's worth it. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's for really me, subjective. it's totally worth it. Somebody totally else might look at that, like, orange kitty cat pet and think that's the stupidest thing ever, but... <laughs> Oh my gosh, I wanted it so bad. <laughs> and the thing is, too, you can it, it's pretty easy to get just a few points in the Hall of Monuments. I mean, if you just want to go back and, and right now grab Guild Wars 1, get I mean, it, it'd probably be easy to get like 20 points in there, right? And uh, and then you'll get, you know, some kind of prize for Guild, for uh, Guild Wars 2 that'll carry over. Somebody should write a guide on that. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if somebody cool. should do that. Somebody did that. Oh. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, especially if somebody doesn't have a game right now that they're not really too excited. And was something I noticed, uh, I was watching chat before the show, and people were just kind of like, you know, on the live show, they're in the chat, and they're kind of chatting about Guild Wars 2 and stuff. And the one thing I did notice is that people were talking about how active the servers actually are. I think somebody went into some area, and I don't remember what area it was, but there were like, there's like 10 instances of the area right now. That shows you that there's still a pretty large community online of Guild Wars 1, so it's not like it's going to be a ghost town if you pick it up. And I, think... I bet they were in Xingjie Monastery. <laughs> Why is that funny? I don't know the inside joke there. <laughs> there's, a, <laughs> there's a festival in Guild Wars 1 this weekend, uh, Camp and New Year. So, yeah, they probably went to Xingjie Monastery, and there's like 50 instances in the American district. Gotcha. And but it really is still a very busy game. Looks like people are saying about 20 bucks right now, too. Looks like I think Amazon might have it for 20 bucks, I think is what Chatroom is saying. So, yeah, it's worth it. It's $20 on Steam. Let's see. Elizabeth, thank you so much for being on the show. Pleasure oh, having you. Thank you so much. Hopefully everybody really can hear you. Activity. Next time we gotta get you a new mic so everybody can just hear you. Hopefully they can yeah, hear you. Yeah, it'll be fixed in the future. But thank you so much for coming. Pass on. the hat. Pass the hat. Pass the hat. Where can they find you on Twitter? Uh, yeah, Twitter. I'm Elizabeth Claire uh, with an X rather than a Z. And the website? Yeah. Anything like that? Uh, you can find me at talkteria.net, which is. Um, Izzy's blog that I occasionally write for, but for now, that's about it. Talk Go over there and follow her on the Twitter. Mr. Sean Schuster, you can follow him. Go to Massively.com. I haven't changed the lower third yet, but Epic Beard, E-P-Y-K. <laughs> it's E-P-Y-K, right? Yeah, E-P-Y-K-B-E-A-R-D. Epic Beard, sir. Epic Beard. Yes. Always a pleasure. Ruby? Wait. Seriously? Give me the Dawson face. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Eight episodes. I want that every, like it's my wallpaper. Every one of them has been a pleasure. I, I'm going to hope and assume. Marina, that seems pretty open about uh, their people coming on shows. So I think this is not the last we have seen of you on Guildcast. At least I hope that not. That would be fun if I can do that. And you have an open door invitation whenever you want to come on. So just Thank you. You just say, hey. It was a lot of fun. Five Thanks minutes for having before me. the show, you're just like, hey, I'm ready to go. Let's do the show. You're in. Make room. Yes. Follow Ruby on Twitter at R-U-B-I underscore. Good luck in everything at ArenaNet. And don't forget that checklist when you show up on Monday. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right. Thank you very, very, very much. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Gary Gannon. And, of course, you can follow Game Breaker TV at Game Breaker TV. Oh, really quick. We run. Uh, we rely heavily on donations over here at Game Breaker TV. If you guys like this episode of Guildcast or any of the other shows we do, please uh, consider a donation. If you come over to the site, there's a donate button. Donate a couple bucks, two, one, five, ten, a thousand, whatever you want. Uh, thank you so much for all the donators for this week. You guys are awesome. We got so much coming up. A whole new website. We're going crazy on it. Coming soon, and uh, we're not going to let you down. So have a great week. We'll see you next week for episode number nine of the Guildcast. I don't know who we're going to. It's going to be like a Womp Rat, Sean's beard. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, nice. Maybe this guy can. He's probably going to be the new co-host. Willie the Wizard, next week. Somebody needs to Photoshop a womp rat into Sean's beard for me, please. Please, get on that. Our community Elizabeth, will. thank you, dear. There you go. You're welcome. Don't forget to follow <laughs> Photoshop <laughs> that put, in Sean's beard. Put my beard on James Vander. <laughs> there you go. There it's done. Guys, have a great week. See you next week for more Guildcast. Bye-bye.